when I see a patient with kidney cancer new to our clinic, uh, I, I usually start by helping the patient understand a little bit where they stand in terms of this disease. What stage are they? Uh, is this disease that's contained within the kidney stage one, two, or even stage three cancer? That's disease that we're gonna treat primarily with surgery. And, and that surgery is gonna be to remove the tumor. It's, it's either gonna be to remove just the tumor or, or the entire kidney, and sometimes even spread of the kidney into a, into a vein or into a lymph node. When, um, when we do that, and after we do that, we're gonna see the patient back to talk about next steps. We're gonna do staging. We're gonna look with a CAT scan for any sign of the cancer recurring in, outside the body. If there's stage three disease or, or lymph node involvement, we may talk with that patient about additional therapy, what we call adjuvant therapy. And it could be a clinical trial or it might be a standard of care. But those are the kinds of things that, that we'll talk about for those patients. For patients that present with stage four cancer, disease that's now spread to another part of the body, it's, it's a little bit of a different approach. There, um, if it looks reasonable, because most of the cancer is still contained within the kidney and, and the disease in the other parts of the body is, is small volume and, and not very symptomatic, we'll start by taking out that kidney. And, and even though that won't cure the patient, it is associated with a, a long-term benefit, a survival benefit, a, a symptom benefit, uh, and maybe a change in the course of the disease. And, and most of the patients under that circumstance will, will recover from that and then will we'll be able to start another therapy. For other patients, we'll, we'll start therapy first. And that therapy is what we call systemic therapy, treatment that goes throughout the body. And it can be either given as a pill or as an IV. The pill therapies tend to be therapies that we have patients take every day. Uh, and, and sometimes we have them take them continuously, sometimes we'll take breaks, but we'll, will monitor patients closely for side effects. The most common side effects with the pill therapies, things like sunitinib or cabozantinib or pazopinib would be things like high blood pressure or fatigue or diarrhea. Occasionally some, some blistering or sores on the hands or in the feet. These are side effects that patients will need to tell us about and, and we'll help them manage. There are some remedies we can use to help manage blood pressure or diarrhea uh, and even help with the hands and the feet. Um, but many times we'll have to change the dose or, or modify the dose. For the IV therapies that we use, it's a little bit of a different strategy. For the most part, these are medicines that are gonna target the immune system. And, and the side effects are different. They still may be diarrhea and fatigue, but we're gonna manage them differently. They're inflammatory and, and, and less driven by the actual treatment and more by the immune system. So we use drugs to dampen the immune system, things like steroids or anti-inflammatories. Again, it's really important to talk with your doctor. These are serious consequences. They can spiral out of control. You can't suppress this information. It's, it's so important. Can't stress enough the, the management of, of side effects uh, and, and, and telling your team to, how to do that. Medicine is, is very much a team sport. I, I don't practice alone. Uh, I have colleagues, I have nurse practitioners and, and physician assistants, we have pharmacists, we have uh, nurses uh, that, that help us uh, with seeing the patient, with managing side effects, with uh, discussing and educating the patient, with follow-up, uh, with, with triage and emergency calls and, and with coverage. Uh, we have social work, we have dietitians, we have exercise physiologists. These are all people that play a role in helping from the health system side. On the family side, you, you can't do this alone. You, you need support. And family's probably the most obvious support mechanism, but, but close friends, uh, church structures, other, other support, community support is, is so important. You know, I can't stress in cancer enough how you recognize who your team is and, and, and trust in them. Uh, and, and the health system's gotta be part of that, but it's not the whole part. We, we really work at Duke and our, our institution really work to talk to people about this, identify all the players in this, and to really communicate with everybody to do the best we can for patients. What, regardless of what treatment they're on or what stage they are, these are all you know, critical aspects to having the best outcome you can.